Oh, g'day. I'm really excited about this recipe today because it's one that I cook for my family quite a lot. It's a Thai green chicken curry. It's really quite simple. Um, you've just got to make a curry paste, cook everything off and it's delicious. I'm especially excited about this one because I grow quite a few of the ingredients for this in my own garden. What you can't grow, you can buy, so don't stop here. Let's keep going. What, I, what we have is a chicken curry, so I've got chicken thigh today. We're going to use some fresh veggies, so I've got zucchini and beans. Of course, you can change that up. In the curry paste, we're going to have some garlic, some galangal. We've got chilies, Thai chilies, coriander roots, all sorts of deliciousness. Uh, and then we put um, some fresh herbs in and some kaffa lime in with the sauce. To finish off the recipe, we use fish sauce, brown sugar and lime juice to give it that acidic, sweet and salty balance. Okay, so the ingredients that I've grown include the kaffa lime leaf. So I've got a kaffa lime tree in my backyard and that's what the leaves look like. Um, the fruit itself looks like little green brains and you can use the zest of it, but I don't know, the inside's not overly useful. But the leaves, these beautiful leaves, and that's how you would buy them at the supermarket, a little packet of those, are super fragrant, really beautiful. So I've got that. Um, I've got a chilli plant, which grows Thai chilies. So they start off green and they end up red, sort of like capsicums, if you grow capsicums or any other kind of chilies. If you can't find Thai green chilies, uh, little bird's eye red chilies will do the job for you. They'll give you the heat that you need. So when we go to finish the dish, I've got this beautiful fresh Vietnamese mint. It's nothing like mint, but it's got the most gorgeous aroma and also some coriander leaves. We'll finish that off. Uh, what else have I grown? Oh, lemongrass. So, Lemongrass grows like this, it's, obviously it's a grass, and it's the stem down here, the, the white and the light green parts that you use in the cooking. This grows like a weed. It grows seeds and they self-scatter and it self-sows. So I've got lemongrass all over the shop at home. And it just means instead of having to pay, you know, a couple of bucks per stalk, I just yank one out whenever I need it. So lemongrass and then I've got galangal, which is um, similar to ginger. It's slightly different, um, slightly woodier. I don't know how else to explain it. If you can't find galangal at the shops, you can absolutely substitute ginger. And I actually have ginger written in the recipe because it's way easier to find. Um, so I do grow this in the garden as well. Nice and easy to grow. It's got a beautiful flower, a bit like an orchid. But can I tell you, it's a pain in the neck to dig up. So um, my recommendation would probably be either buy the galangal or buy ginger instead. Once you've taken off all these roots that have soaked all the dirt off and scraped it almost clean, you end up with something like this. Normally when you buy it, it's a bit pinker than that. I'm not quite sure why that's not pink. I'm sure there's a galangal expert out there who could help me with that, but it's still beautiful, it's fragrant, it tastes divine. So. That's how it looks when you pull it up, but you've, you're also crying because it was hard. Okie dokes. So, there are a couple of components to this dish. There's your curry paste, there's the ingredients that you cook into it, and then there's the sauce. So the first thing to do is to make the curry paste, which is where all the beautiful flavour comes from. So I'm going to slice up this gallon gal. It's, it's quite a fibrous little number, so even though I'm going to put it through a food processor, I'm going to slice it fairly thin against its sort of fibrous grain and you do this exact same with ginger. So ginger and galangal both have a fibre that runs lengthways through it. You slice across it so that you um, cut those fibres nice and short. And we're going to see the same thing with the lemongrass. So that goes into a bowl. It's all going to go through a bit of a food process so you don't have to be too worried about it. Garlic can just go straight in. The recipe says two so I've put in three. Uh, never hurts to have too much garlic. Now my little um, Thai green chilies, two of them are tiny, one of them's red. I'm going to pop them in whole with the seeds intact. So the seeds and the, um, the, the membrane that hold the seeds to the chilli is where the heat is. So I'm going to throw that in and that'll give you a little bit of heat for this curry. If you don't do heat very well, you can take the seeds out, take the pith out and you'll, you'll mellow it down quite a lot. The lemongrass, so I've stripped away all that green and I'm just going to go right down there. It's a bit like bamboo, the way it's got the joints in it. 
and I'm just going to slice it until my knife is kind of objecting about going through it. And once again, because this is very tough and very fibrous, you don't want to leave all the work up to your food processor. You do a little bit of the work with your knife. And what you can do once you get to this point where it's sort of woody and fibrous is you can break it up like that and use it in your rice. So you can throw it into your rice and it will give your rice a very, very faint and delicate lemongrass aroma. So the lemongrass goes in with the gal and gal, the garlic and the chilies. And then the last thing in there is going to be your coriander roots. Now I do grow coriander at home, but I'm bad at it. it um, it bolts on me all the time. So I didn't have enough coriander with roots on it to bring for this recipe today. So it doesn't hurt when you buy it to soak it in a bit of water and that loosens up the dirt in it. But you really need to rinse it because inside all of those stalks, it grows up from out of the dirt. So you end up with dirt in there. So it's really important to run that under a tap or you'll end up with it in between your teeth. So now I'm just going to scrape those roots with a knife to get that real fibrous bit off the outside. Sometimes you can buy coriander at the, at the greengrocer at the supermarket and it does not have the roots on it. The roots and the stems are where you get the most flavour. The leaves are where you get the aroma, which is why you sort of put those on the top and the heat from the curry gives you that lovely aroma. But uh, you really want to buy coriander with the roots intact so that you can use those because they are delicious. And if you're one of those people who doesn't like coriander, oh, I've got to be careful what I say, don't I? There's plenty of you. <laughs> it's genetic, you can't help it. <laughs> so, the roots and the stems go into your curry paste. And you can take a few leaves in there, that's fine, but you want to leave the majority of your leaves to garnish the dish. And so now what I'm going to do is pop those ingredients through the food processor and make sure that it's as fine as it can possibly be before we start to cook. The food processor I'm going to use today is the Thermomix. It's a very, very powerful um, curry paste maker, curry blend maker. So I'm just using it as a food processor today, not a cooking machine. So if you've got a Nutribullet or a Vitamix or any kind of food processor with a bit of power, you can do this paste in it. Otherwise, you can use a mortar and pestle. Make sure you're mad at someone and just really bash it out and that'll go great. So in with that, and we're gonna to need to scrape that down once or twice. Let's just get that going. So that's quite dry, which is fine because I'm about to cook with it. But if you wanted to make like a big batch and keep it, you would put it in with some oil and also store it um, so that it's covered with a layer of oil, just a neutral oil, um, peanut oil or uh, canola oil, rice bran oil, um, and keep it in the fridge and use it within a few days because it's so fresh, you don't want to lose that freshness. But um, for today, I'm going to cook with it right away. So that it smells amazing already. So what I'm doing here is just slicing up some thigh fillet. Any big bits of fat you can take off, but you don't have to worry too much because the fat's part of what makes it tasty. Uh, if you went to your Thai restaurant, what you'd find for this particular curry is probably a very thinly sliced piece of chicken breast that's uh, dropped in and simmered in the sauce as it cooks. The reason I like to use thigh is because uh, you can reheat it very easily without it drying out and um, you can cook it very easily without it drying out. Whereas when you use chicken breast, uh, once it hits that point of being cooked, you, you really can't take it much over that or it gets a bit dry and sawdusty. So my preference has always been thigh fillet for anything that you need to simmer or anything that cooks for a while. So I'm just getting that pan nice and hot because the idea of browning it is just to give it a little boost in flavour. I'm going to cook this in a couple of batches on a nice hot pan. It doesn't have to cook all the way through at this stage. So we just want to get a bit of colour on it and then it will finish cooking in the curry sauce. 
So I'm just spreading that out and I'm gonna give it a moment by itself. I'm not gonna stir it around. I'm not gonna continually move it around. And what it means is it gets a chance to go brown there on the base of the pan. And then all I'm gonna do is flip it, give it a moment to go that nice golden brown on the other side. And that's all we need to do with the chicken. So what I'm looking for is a little bit of white to sort of creep up the sides and then I know that it's turning gold and brown underneath. And the whole purpose of this is just to get a little bit of that colour so we get that lovely chickeny flavour in the curry. Okay, so that's got a bit of brown all over it. Just gonna tip it out while we cook off our curry paste. So a little oil. And straight in with that beautiful fresh and while that's cooking, I'm going to take away everything I've used on the raw chicken so that I know that I've got a nice clean veg to work with. So what I'm looking for here is just for that aroma of the curry paste to really hit me in the face. If I start coughing, you'll know I've got chilli in my throat. Uh, but we need, because this is a raw ingredient, what we need to happen is for this to cook out a little bit. And make sure you do have enough oil in there because if it burns that will affect your curry. So once you've cooked the curry paste for about a minute you're going to add the chicken to it including any juices that have accumulated in that bowl and stir it all around so it's mixed in. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add a 400 ml can of coconut cream. Just going to pour that in there Drop the temperature a little bit and get on with the next bit of the dish. So I'm going to take a couple of kaffa lime leaves. Now there's a couple of ways you can use this in the curry and just crunch it up in your hands and throw it in. But when people are eating it, they wouldn't eat the kaffa lime leaf. It sort of comes out and goes to the side. The other way to do it is to take the woody spine out. So just take the stalk out of those beautiful double barreled leaves and then you slice those into threads as finely as you can. So stack them up so it's nice and efficient in a neat little pile and slice those kaffir lime leaves into little fine like pieces of cotton as finely as you can. And that goes into your curry as well, and that fragrances it so beautifully. Now you're gonna simmer that for long enough for the chicken to cook, and in the meantime, you're gonna get your veggies ready. So today I'm gonna to use some beans, really easy one beans, because you just top and tail them, throw them in. Well, that makes it hard, doesn't it? If you tap them all together at one end, so that they're all the same length at one end, you can top, do that and then turn them around and tap them so that they're all in the same spot at the other end and it saves you doing them individually. With your zucchini there's a bunch of different things you can do, you can peel it and scrape it with a fork and make flowers out of it, you can just slice it up or you can cut it into strips which is what I'm going to do. If you've got a vegetable peeler you can just peel ribbons off it and it cooks in a moment. But I'm just going to slice it into pieces that roughly approximate the size and thickness of the beans and they will cook at a similar rate. So you just check in on your chicken and about a minute before the fattest bit of fire chicken in there is cooked, you throw in your vegetables to finish them off. It's very, very easy. Don't overcook your veggies. Don't throw them in there five minutes before they go a bit soggy. If you're worried about your chicken, just pick out the biggest, fattest bit you can find and cut it in half. So what you'll find with side chicken is that it won't go white, white. It'll be a kind of faintly brown, or sometimes even a purplish color. But as long as it's not pink, then it's cooked. Okay, so in with the veggies about a minute before it finishes. And we're very close to the truly magical part of this dish. So this is where the magic happens. You've got all those beautiful herbs and aromats and things bubbling away on the stove, but you really can't appreciate the flavour of them until you've added some sweetness, some sourness, and some saltiness. 
The heat's in there, we've got our little chilies going on in there, but these are the things that bring all of that to life. So I'd recommend having a little taste now and a little taste after you've added this stuff. So I'm gonna add a tablespoon of brown sugar, fairly firmly packed, and I'm gonna add a couple of teaspoons of fish sauce. So just what you buy at the supermarket is fine. This is squid brand, and then some lime juice. Now the beauty of this is, this is where your palate comes into it. So you mix these things through, taste it, and if you'd like a little sweeter, add a little bit more sugar. If it needs a bit more salt, add some more of this. The one thing I'll say to you is before I add the lime juice, is I'm turning off the heat. And I'm gonna do that because once the heat really hits that lime juice, it kind of disappears. So you get beautiful zingy freshness from it when it goes in at first, but once the heat, um, once you cook it, it goes away. So if you make this dish and you've got a bit left over and you're excited for lunch the next day, make sure you get another fresh lime on hand just to freshen it up a little bit. So, in with the juice of a lime, which will equal a couple of tablespoons, although that, this one's a, a nice, big, generous lime. And what you've got there is the simplest, most beautiful Thai green curry. We're going to top it with some of those lovely aromats and uh, yell out to everyone that it's dinner time. So there it is. Once you've got your ingredients together, it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes tops for this recipe. It's a really yummy dinner, a bit of steamed rice, some good company and Bob's your uncle.